I'm curious what you guys think of the uh, the new mulligans. So from what I've seen and from what I've played, I really love the new mulligans. It just feels great. I get to just mulligan in round one without a fear in the world that I might need those mulligans later on. It's just, it's great. I, I zero complaints so far. The only scenario where it backfires is let's say you play three witchers and a roach. Um, and you draw all of them in your opening hand, in which case you mulligan the two witchers away and you have uh, a witcher and roach in hand, which means you're not going to get the roach out in round one. But uh, assuming you play witchers in round one, you just mulligan the roach away later in round two or in round three, and you get to save it as carryover. Um, so even in that case, it's, it's really not that big of a deal. I, I just, I'm so happy with these changes. Also, another fun thing. In game, you can now see the provision cost of um, cards. So this is a nice little quality of life um, adjustment that they made. This wasn't there before, and now it is. So if you are newer to the game, I would suggest starting to learn these. Um, just by you see a new card, right click it, look at the bottom right, see what it is. Uh, it can't uh, hurt to know them, especially when you do start obtaining new cards. Um, when you go into a deck builder, you want to know the costs of different cards. Uh, it, it just makes building decks a little easier. So, I mean, yeah, you can always filter, but, you know, it's nice to know what the cost is. So, I, I do hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, the previous games. And let me know what your thoughts on the, uh, the leaders. I, I'm really curious to hear your guys' opinions on the different... Uh, provisions that each leader gives. Uh, I personally think that I actually think Usurper is fine at ten. Uh, I've played him enough, and I think his effect is powerful enough that ten is okay. Uh, Arrakis Queen is still pretty underwhelming. Full Test I think is fine. Francesca I think is fine. Bran. I played some Miracle SK today on stream. I'm still pretty disappointed in Bran. He's just not strong enough. Um, I, I do think he needs the extra provisions. I'm thinking like 15, may, maybe 16. Um, yeah. M here I think is fine. I, I actually would not be surprised if M here got bumped down to 13 because of the amount of Shoop M here. Shoop M here is probably the most popular deck I see on ladder. Harold, this one, I have no idea. Harold, for some bizarre reason, is not seeing much play anymore. Um, in the past two or three days, no one's playing him as much as they used to be. I used to see Harold every single game or like every other game, but for some reason, not a lot of people are playing. This could be one, people were bored of it and they're trying new things, uh, but usually that disappears within the first 24 hours. Um, but somebody mentioned it might actually be the fact that every other faction got the increased mulligans. Uh, SK was already super consistent and could thin to zero. Um, so the extra mulligans, let's say in round three, don't really have any effect. Unless, of course, you didn't draw like Berna uh, in round three normally. So, yeah, maybe the power level of all the other decks went up significantly enough that Harold is no longer the strongest leader in the game. Um, I still don't think that's true. But, yeah, maybe my viewers are onto something. Um, Unseen Elder, I've actually seen a decent amount of Unseen Elder. I, I think he's good. I, I really do. Um, I think he's actually in a pretty good spot right now. Maybe up 1p. I think the biggest issue is coming up with a refined Deathwish list because there are so many different uh, variations of Deathwish that you can run. So I think it's just going to come down to honing in on the best deck where... In which we'll be able to see Unseen Elder Shine. Iced. <sighs> I think Harold's better than Ice. The only reason to run Ice is for Yetta BDM as like a finisher in round three. The issue with that is um, Geralt Professional. Geralt Professional is seeing a ton of play right now. Uh, and because Yetta is at six when it comes out and the BDM brings it up to 18, it always dies to professional, which is kind of an issue. So saving that as a win condition doesn't really work because like 30 plus percent of decks are running professional. The only other way to play ice is with Hemdall. You play Hemdall via ice or you play Hemdall from hand and then you ice Hjalmar and you get a lot of value. The problem is it's kind of finicky. Uh, you have to save it for round three. I, I think that there needs to be more warriors in the game for ice to see more play so as of now 
it just might be lack of cards and support for Ice. I, he, he might be better in the upcoming expansion. I wouldn't be surprised if he got bumped to 16. Philavandrel. Philavandrel still sucks. I see zero Philavandrel. No one plays Philavandrel. I, I don't. I Honestly, I want this leader to get reworked. I hate the leader. It Whatever. <laughs> I'm just not a fan. Uh, he's just so underwhelming. Bruver is still the best Goyato leader because the best Goyato gold is Shiru, and the best way to use, utilize Shiru is Bruver. So, yeah, Bruver is still the best Goyato leader. I was kind of hoping Ethne might sneak in because you can use Call of the Forest and Ithlin to boost Shiru up and, like, ping Shiru down and other cards. It's just, it's, it's not worth it. Bruver is just better. Um, I've had games where I'll get into round three and... I won't use any ethne procs because I've killed everything, and Bruver allows me to boost my side of the board, which is really significant. Uh, it also works well with cards like Crushing Trap um, and Lacerate. So I, I just Bruver just feels so much better than ethne. Uh, the only reason I would run ethne is if I'm playing like a Degenerate Artifact Epidemic Scorch deck. Uh, if you're playing a deck like that, the single pings to align cards is very important. Um, that deck can be very good. The problem is at higher levels, um, people are smarter and they'll bleed you. So if you don't win round one, they will bleed you in round two. And a lot of the times you will get 2 owed uh, or you'll blow everything and go down a card into round three. Uh, and the finisher aren't uh, the finishers aren't that great for that deck. So yeah, I, I don't think that deck's going to be very viable. Calvi, I actually haven't seen a lot of Calvi on ladder. People said that the worst thing about Calvite was the lack of mulligans. Oh, I forgot to mention, um, the reason why Usurper is actually pretty good, yeah, he lost five provisions from last patch, but he got five mulligans. He went from one mulligan to six mulligans. That's insane. Uh, the biggest issue with Usurper was the consistency, and now that consistency is no longer an issue. Uh, the deck does very well. Yeah, sorry, side note. Calvi, yeah, I haven't seen a lot of it. Uh, maybe Boost Guard sees some play in the future. Uh, I've seen a few, like, Commander's Horn deck with, like, Stefan's kind of gimmicky, but eh, it could work. Aridin, uh, we're seeing Imworth decks, Pop-Tart decks, um, Slizzard decks. They're okay. They're kind of gimmicky in that Aridin kind of just smashes it. <laughs> so... Uh, I think the best one of the three is probably an Immorthos because the other two do auto loose to Erden. So, eh, it, it, it could be good. I think it needs a little bit more refinement, which is just going to take some time. King Demavend, uh, we're still in a pretty heavy control meta, so I still don't think Demavend is going to see enough play. Uh, it can be very good if it starts uh, rolling and your opponent doesn't have removal for your cards that are giving charges. Uh, the problem is that's not the norm. Uh, your best case scenario with this deck is like queuing the monsters because uh, they don't play a lot of removal. So, yeah, I, I could see a bump up on point with him. Princess Ada, eh, it's just not good enough. Um, I, don't, I don't really know what the deck needs. Maybe make it so that it damages uh, two different units or damage a unit by four and then damage a unit by four. That makes it a little easier to get full value on Ada, or you could kill like two engines. Um, Maybe that would make it playable. I, I honestly don't know. Bump up a point on Ada. Woodland Spirit. Uh, Woodland Spirit is still very strong. Uh, it's probably the strongest leader. Uh, eight points. He is the highest of all monsters for provisions. So still one of the better leaders, if not the best leader for monsters. King Hensel. <sighs> He's just not very good. I, I, I don't like him. I tried him today. He's underwhelming. It just doesn't feel great. Yeah, you can like blue dream a unicorn from your opponent and then um, Hensel your other unicorn out of your deck. So you can play two unicorns in one turn, but it's just it's too gimmicky. It's not consistent. Kraken Crate. Uh, I actually saw a decent amount of Kraken Crate at the end of the day today. Uh, I, I actually think he's pretty good. I mean, he was pretty good before. The only reason why uh, he started seeing less plays because everybody started hopping onto the Herald train. Um, there's a three provision difference between Herald and Crack, so eh, maybe it's enough to push Crack. Um, it's nice to queue Crack against the Usurper deck because you do get that those extra provisions. Uh, you get seven over the Usurper deck, so yeah, Crack Crack's pretty good. 
I don't know if he's better than Harold, but he he's solid. Uh, Morvin. <laughs> uh, I actually played some reveal today because chat was trolling me and they told me whatever. So I made a reveal deck. I actually won like four or five games in a row with reveal, which I don't really know how. Granted, one of the games I queued into Bran, which I would argue is one of the worst leaders in the game. So that that match doesn't really count. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think the issue with Morvin is not the leader itself, but the fact that there's not a lot of support and a lot of the reveal cards are very random, right? So Delarian soldiers thin when they get revealed. I've, I had a few games where they were at the bottom of my deck. They just, they never came out by round three. They still were there. Uh, and that's kind of unfortunate. So it's a little gimmicky. The The variance is too high and the power level just isn't there. So uh, may, maybe in the future, if we get more reveal uh, synergy, but honestly, I kind of want reveal to get reworked. So I'm kind of glad reveal isn't very strong. And last but not least, uh, Ethne, we talked about her a little earlier when I uh, mentioned Bruver. <sighs> yeah, she's good if you want to play an artifact degenerate list with like a Petamax and Scorch. Uh, otherwise, Bruver is just better because you can utilize Shiru easier with Bruver. Uh, the extra four points are nice. Those extra four points are good because Epidemic and Scorch are more expensive uh, bronzes and golds. So it works well. But outside of that very specific list, I probably would not play Ethne. I don't think it's worth it. The other consideration is like an elf deck. The problem is elf Squatel, one, is not very good, uh, mainly because the finishers are complete garbage. Squatel's finishers suck. They, there aren't any. If you go into Squatel and look at the top gold cards, the best cards are Shiru, which you use Bruver for, and... Uh, the Immune Dragon, but that's not really a finisher. It's just a really strong card in control matchups, and you can, like, boost it with Unicorn. But it doesn't itself put a lot of points on the board, right? Some of the goals, like Isengrim, Elias, they're just... They're too inconsistent, and, yeah, they're just not good. So, yeah, Ethne's good. Bruver in a, um Epidemic Scorch deck with Artifacts. Other than that, I probably would not touch Ethne. Even a Regis deck. Regis is just too inconsistent because if your opponent goes tall, Regis blows. Um, it's just not worth it. So, yeah. Uh, those are all the leaders. We're going to be getting a couple more at the end of January, so that's exciting. The only one we know about right now in terms of what it could be doing is the Scoia'tael leader. Scoia'tael leader is going to have some kind of synergy with traps. I'm a little concerned just because I, I think the leader is going to... Hopefully I'm wrong, uh, but I feel like it's going to be a little bit underwhelming, uh, the effect. And the problem is Bruver is such a good leader with Trap Scoia'tael right now because, one, it works with Shiru, and Shiru is just the best Scoia'tael gold card. Um, but, two, it works with Crushing Trap. You can move a uh, unit and get extra value off of Crushing, which is really, really important. So... It, <laughs> The trap squatel leader is going to have to be really good. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to play Bruver. Even in a trap deck, I will not play the trap leader because Bruver is just better. So hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully the new trap squatel leader is actually good and has impact on the game. So we'll see. Uh, let me know what you guys think about the leaders. Uh, should they get nerfed, buffed? Different ability rework. I think if any leader needs a rework, it's probably Phil Evandrel and Ada to an extent. Um, the rest of the leaders I like for the most part. So, uh, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next video.